Hello everybody, this is Anil Sanghi. I'm an MBA finance from Narsi Munji and a CFA from US. I have work experience of more than 15 years leading teams in the fields of finance, accounts and financial planning and analysis. I have worked for companies like HSBC, Infosys, Capital One and HP Enterprises. All along, I have been a teacher and I have been teaching accounts and various management subjects to students. This video series is an attempt to lay a strong foundation of accountancy for class 11 students. This gives them the flexibility to learn the subject at their own uh, pace and also gives them the opportunity to relearn the subject, to revise the subject as and when they want it. They can listen to the series as many times as they want in an attempt to master the subject. So let us start the series. So in today's series, what we are going to learn is chapter number three, which is recording of transactions. And in this particular video, we are going to learn what is a business transaction, what are the source documents, and what is an accounting equation. So let us start. Let us first understand what is a business transaction. It business transaction is very simple. It is a transaction which is related to the business. The second condition is that the economic reward and risk of this transaction should accrue to the business and not to the owner. We will understand this concept with the help of some examples, right? So first example, let us say we are buying a laptop for business use, then it is a business transaction because the benefit of laptop will accrue to the business. However, if one were to buy a laptop, for personal use, it cannot be called as a business transaction, even though the transaction is same. But the purpose of first transaction is to benefit the business, wherein the second transaction is benefiting either an employee or the owners of the business. Take another example. Let us say there is a client and we take the client for dinner. We we call them for dinner. So we spend money, company's money for taking client for a dinner. So this is a business transaction because we believe the client is going to give us a business or is already giving us a business and the economic risk and reward is accruing to the organization. Similarly, we could again take our own family members, our spouse, children or anybody else for a dinner. However, because this is a personal transaction wherein I am taking somebody out to dinner and the business is not getting any benefit out of it it is not a business transaction take third example you know traveling so a lot of times people uh, travel to attend business meetings and conferences so when an employee travels to attend a business meeting he incurs certain expenses so those expenses are business transaction however the, if the same employee is traveling to attend marriage of an employee marriage of a friend it cannot be called to be a business transaction so just to revise business transaction is something which is related to the business and where the economic reward and risk of the transaction accrues to the business i hope you are clear with this concept now here i have a few examples and i would like you to test your understanding uh, say we are paying office telephone bill can you tell me if it is a business transaction or a not business transaction watching a movie with family second example buying uniform for office staff buying uniform for daughter for new academic year Bli buying flowers for wife on her birthday sending client gift on his birthday i would like you to write whether it is a business transaction or a non business transaction Let us look at the answers. Paying office telephone bill is a business transaction because the benefit is accruing to the organization. Watching a movie? No, it is not. 
buying uniform for office staff it is a business transaction because through uniform we are trying to bring in some kind of discipline or uniformity in the office however buying uniform for daughter is a personal transaction and it is not a business transaction buying flowers for wife you know it's a very important thing all employees needs to be motivated and hence it is important for them to buy flowers or gifts for wife husband girlfriend boyfriend however it is their personal life and anything which they are doing in their personal life cannot be classified as a business transaction sending gift to client on his birthday yes it is a business transaction because here we are maintaining good relationship with our clients and customers let us continue uh, let us look at business transactions and the aspects of business transactions every business transaction has two aspects the first aspect is to give and the second aspect is to take so we are in there are always two sides to the coin so you are giving something and in return you are getting something it is like uh, you know newton's third law wherein every action has an equal and opposite reaction so the transaction also has two sides to it and whatever you give you are getting value for that much amount or in terms of money or maybe in terms of kind so what should you record you should record both the give and the take aspect of the business transaction we know that accountancy we is a double entry system and we should record both sides of the transaction how to record we should record all transactions in a chronological order that is date wise and when to record see there's no hard and fast rule for this uh, ideally you should record all transactions on a daily basis if you are a big organization like infosys or reliance or sbi you have lakhs and lakhs of transactions and you have a dedicated team to record these transactions and you will be recording them on a daily basis however small firms may not have the resources to record them on a daily basis they then in that case they can record it on a weekly or a monthly basis however very important is to ensure that all the transactions are recorded and they are recorded in a chronological order now let us look at the aspects of business transaction with an example uh, in this case we see every day we go to supermarket and we buy certain goods from the supermarket and all accountancy is from the aspect of the business so here the supermarket is selling some goods and in return they are getting some cash so what are the two aspects of this particular business transaction they are giving goods which also are called as sales and they are getting money either in the form of cash or maybe through a credit card so these are the two aspects giving of goods and taking of money let's take another example business is purchasing raw material and paying by a check so what are the two transaction or what are the two aspects of the transaction that is happening here one is giving money by check and taking goods which are raw materials which are required for manufacturing the products of the organization so we will record both sides of this transaction another example there are employees who are working for us and at the end of the month we are expected to pay them salaries there are times when we have not paid the salaries on the 31st of the month we may pay them later so what is happening there is a promise to pay in this case what do you think should i record this transaction or should i not because i have taken the services but i have not given anything to them right now we should record this transaction because in a business even if we do not pay money the promise to pay itself constitutes an obligation and obligation also needs to be recorded our employees becomes our creditors till the time we don't pay them salaries and we are creating a liability so we record both sides of the transaction one is giving salaries and two availing the services of the employees and you know in terms of how to record it we will look at it once we do some questions on journals but we need to ensure that we record both sides of this transaction 
okay let's look at some of the aspects of transactions and let us see how much have you understood okay so here are some of the business transactions i'll request you to look at this business transactions and see and tell us what are the two aspects of those transactions. you can pause the video and you can let us know that right now let us look at the answer we are the first example selling products was credit we are giving goods and that is called as sales and we are receiving a promise and we are creating data which are an asset second simple example paying office telephone bill we are paying cash and we are getting the services of telephone uh, third example selling goods for cash we are in this case we are getting the money so we are selling goods and we are paying cash another example buying furniture of office we are paying cash and we are getting furniture which is an asset paying electricity bill for office we are giving cash and we call it an expense so it is an office expense and we are getting electricity paying office rent again we are paying cash we are getting office space which is again an expense advertisement on youtube this is a very interesting example you know we have not paid so we are creating a liability in the form of creditor however what are we getting are we getting any customers not really because an advertisement may or may not result in uh, you know sales but there is a brand image which we are creating so this is an expense which is created for creating a brand image and through the brand image through advertisement with customers knowing about us our goods and product and services they may come and buy from us so it is a valid business transaction then we have already seen here buying raw material we are paying cash and we are getting raw material so i hope now you are clear with the with both the aspects and how to identify two aspects of a business transaction. The next topic is source documents. So what is a source document? A source document basically is an evidence to a business transaction. It provides a paper based evidence that the business transaction has taken place and money or goods or money's worth has been exchanged. What are some of the examples? A cash memo, invoice, sales bill, pain slip, check, salary slip, all these are examples. So when you are buying a product from a supermarket, they give a cash memo. Then there are invoices when you buy products on credit. There are sales bill. When you deposit money into a bank, you use a pain slip. Customers pay through check and we pay to employees through a bank account and we also have salary slip as a evidence of source documents in addition to source documents organizations also prepare vouchers to record the transactions and there are instances where we may not have any source document let us take for example when somebody is traveling by an auto for a business requirement he or she may not have any source document as an auto driver may not give you a invoice or a cash memo right so in that in those cases organizations can prepare vouchers and get them approved by the right authority as defined within the organization so there is a preparer checker and approver concept and once they prepare this they can use it as a source document for documenting the transactions however it is very important to understand that these kind of vouchers can only be prepared for small amounts and cannot be prepared for very big amounts and this is a format which is given in the textbook for a voucher uh, broadly there is no you know format it can be prepared in whichever form you want however what is most important thing is it should have the name of the firm the date voucher number and voucher numbers have to be prepared in a serial order and which account is getting debited which account is getting credited and the amount and the reason for this particular transaction so as long as you have this information you can you know prepare the vouchers there are also different types of vouchers this is an example of a transaction voucher let us look at what are the 
types of vouchers we have we have a cash voucher which is used for recording a cash transaction a debit voucher then we have a credit voucher for you know when you create a debit and a credit it is used a journal voucher for journal entry and a transaction voucher to evidence a transaction right this brings us to our next topic and a very important topic which is an accounting equation just before we go into the concept of accounting equation let us revisit our concept on business entity concept which we covered in our previous video so as per the business entity concept a business is separate from the owner or the proprietor it has its own assets it has its own liabilities and it has capital so what is an asset asset is something that the business owns liability is something that the business owes which means it has to pay to outsiders and capital is some amount which the business has to pay to the proprietors it is the amount that the proprietor has invested in the business so what does an accounting equation say an accounting equation is a linear equation which says assets are always equal to liability plus capital which means whatever the business owns and whatever the business owes to outsiders or to the proprietor is always equal neither does business have anything nor does it have to give anything whatever it has it belongs to others or to the owners right so a is equal to l plus c and since it's a linear equation you can also say liabilities is equal to capital minus asset or capital is equal to asset minus liability this is a very important equation and this is used by all the organization and this is the basis for a balance sheet and the balance sheet is called a balance sheet because both sides of balance sheet the asset side and the liability side are equal and they are equal at all times they are equal for a profitable firm they are equal for a loss making firm they are in fact equal for a organization which is a bankrupt and you might be surprised as how is that possible uh, you know it is only possible because we can have negative values here so the values need not always be positive a capital can be negative of course assets cannot be negative they have to be positive or they can be at max zero uh, liabilities similarly what they owe to anybody else can either be zero or positive but the balancing equation becomes capital so when we have more liabilities than asset then the capital becomes negative so balance sheet always balances and this equation is true for all kinds of organization at all points in time now we'll look at some of the examples of accounting equations a most popular example which you will also see in journal is somebody a businessman starts business with cash of say rupees 1 lakh so what are the two things that are happening one is business is getting started and the organization is getting cash so asset cash is an asset so the cash is 100000 or 1 lakh there are no liabilities right now but there is capital which is 1 lakh so that is the amount which is invested by the proprietor in the business so asset is equal to capital plus liability 1 lakh of asset is equal to 1 lakh of capital plus liability let's move forward the next day the business buys furniture for cash of rupees 50000 so what is happening here cash is reducing from 1 lakh to 50000 because 50000 is paid out at the same time furniture is coming into the organization furniture is also an asset so you have cash of 50000 and furniture of 50000 together they make 1 lakh rupee liability there's no change in the liability and capital also there's no change so even though there is a transaction there is no change in liability and capital the change is only in the asset so a business transaction can impact an asset and a liability 
can impact an asset and capital, can impact just a liability, can impact asset and liability. So all kinds of combinations are possible. They don't need to be, you know, in a particular form, but they are going to impact either one or more sides of this equation. Let's look at one more example. Uh, now we are buying raw material on credit for rupees 25,000. So here the asset has not changed from last time. We have cash of 50,000, furniture of 50,000 and raw material also coming, which is also an asset for 25,000 rupees. So we have overall assets of 1,25,000 rupees and we have liability. Now, since we have bought the raw material on credit, we have liability of 25,000 rupees and there is no change in the capital. So we have asset which is 125,000 rupees and liability which is 25,000 rupees and capital which is 1 lakh. So together they are equal. Take another example, paying off office rent rupees 10,000. This is an interesting example because when you pay rent, your cash is reducing. So you have now instead of 50,000, you the cash reduced to 40,000. There's no change in furniture or raw material. So your assets are 1 lakh 15,000. Your liability of creditors is 25,000 as it is. But capital is reducing by 10,000. And why is that happening? So any expense or income uh, is going to impact capital. So rent is actually reducing my profit so any loss or reduction is profit is going to go and impact the capital. So all profit and all loss belong to the owners of the business. And in this case, this is a theoretical loss because right now we have not generated any profit. So rent is going to reduce my capital by 10,000 rupees. And hence my accounting equation matches. I have assets of 1,15,000, liability of 25,000, and capital of 90,000, right? Continuing with our example, uh, we had purchased raw material for 25,000 rupees. Now we are going to sell this raw material and we have made some product out of it and we are going to sell this product for 35,000 rupees for cash. What is happening here? We have profit because sale price minus cost price that is what profit is so we have a sale price of 35000 rupees our cost price is 25000 rupees so 35000 rupees minus 25000 rupees we have profit of 10000 rupees so our asset is increasing because we got 35000 rupees so 40000 rupees was our previous cash now we got 35000 rupees additional so overall we have 75000 rupees in cash furniture and raw material Furniture, there's no change. Raw material, because we converted them into finished product and sold them, we don't have any more raw material. So raw material is becoming zero. And overall, our cash, which is 75,000 plus furniture, 50,000. Together, it is 1,25,000. What is happening to our liability? There's no change here. So what is happening to capital? As I already said, all profit and loss belongs to capital. In this case, we had a profit of 10,000. So 90,000 plus 10,000 of profit, 1 lakh is the capital. And you can see accounting equation matches 1 lakh 25,000 is equal to 25,000 plus 1 lakh. Now it is the time for you to, you know, give test your understanding. Uh, let's take a example wherein furniture costing rupees 20,000 were destroyed by fire and whatever were we could you know salvage we sold that for 2000 rupees for cash so can you try and understand and note it down and let us know how is it going to impact your accounting equation i'd like you to pause this video right now do this part of the equation and then check for the answer so let's look at this when furniture is destroyed our furniture is reduced by 20,000. We have recovered 2,000 rupees. And so there is a loss of 18,000 rupees. And we could get 2,000 rupees in cash. So here, 
cash is going up 75000 rupees plus 2000 rupees 77000 rupees furniture is reducing because it is destroyed by fire so 50000 minus 20000 we have 30000 rupees of furniture left together 77000 plus 30000 is 1 lakh 7000 our liabilities is not changing but our capital is going to change we had a capital of 1 lakh rupee in till our last transaction now because we have incurred a loss of 18000 rupees our capital is going to reduce by that much amount so 1 lakh minus 18000 we have capital of 82000 so together assets of 1 lakh 7 thousand liability of 25000 and capital of 82000 together they are matching and that accounting equation matches so i hope you have understood that you know how accounting equation matches at all points in time and that is why it is also called as a balance sheet equation when you do balance sheet you will understand this in more clear and concise terms but for right now i would request you to remember that asset is equal to liability plus capital that is an accounting equation and in my next video we are also going to do questions from your textbook on this particular topic this brings us to the end of our video today let us just summarize this video so in today's video session we learned what is a business transaction business transactions are some things which are related to the business wherein the economic risk and reward of the transaction accrues to the business and there are two aspects of every business transaction give and take and we should record both sides of the business transaction we should record give as well as take then the second thing that we learned is about source documents source documents evidence says the business transaction and some of the examples are cash memo invoice sales bill vouchers etc we also learnt about the types of vouchers cash voucher debit voucher credit voucher journal and transaction voucher you can also look in the slide for the example of format of a voucher then the third thing that we learnt in this particular session is what is an accounting equation accounting equation is also known as a balance sheet equation because it is always in balance accounting equation says asset is equal to capital plus liability and lastly we learned about we revised business entity concept we revised the fact that asset is something that the business owns liability is something that the business owes and capital is something that is invested by the proprietors of the business into the business and all profit and loss belongs to the owners and hence profits get added to the capital and losses gets reduced from the capital thank you so much for joining us today if you like this video please uh, mark it and press the bell icon in this series we are going to record all the chapters for class 11 and i will be posting all the lectures please share with your friends and you know everybody else in your school college let us create a culture of learning and let every child learn so with that request we end this session thank you so much let us know your feedback let us know your queries if you have any and in subsequent videos we'll also do question and answers we'll do illustration problems we'll do problems which appear at the end of the chapter thank you so much have a good day jai gurudev